Girl is on fire! <laughs> All the fire. Every All piece of fire. fire. Look at that. Fire, Look at fire. that fire. fire, everyone. Uh, hey, everyone. It is Friday. It's time for another paint and slay here uh, for Idol Champions. I'm V, and above me is Lauren. And today we're going to be having some fun finishing up this fire giant that we've been working on for uh, three episodes. This is going on to episode four, or part four, rather, of this particular miniature. But before we jump into getting all the final details pulled together on this stunning mini. And by the way, don't forget, Lauren is working on the other version of the Fire Giant that is also oh. from WizKids D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures lines, just two different waves. Um, before we get into the thick of it, uh, we have some cool things that are happening revolving around the game Idol Champions. So Lauren, what's, what's the story? What's the news? What's the doing? <laughs> so... I have these two friends, Todd and Megan. They're awesome people. They play these two awesome characters that I got a chance to, to play with for quite a while named Whittle and Averin. And they have new skins. Look at that. Uh, spell jammer skins, because what is better than that? Like, look at how cool. So, okay, it's don't get me incredible. wrong. Spell jammer Averin, also very cool. Creepy that his face is on the bomb, but that's Todd. I get that. He's yeah, all into that. Very Todd. Yeah. It's very Todd, but it's also, it's super cool. But like, look at that. I know. Yeah. I know. The hair and the boots are just like, oh my God, come on. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. It's and so the cool. gun with the, the glass mm -hmm. over, the, it's very, mm -hmm. very spell jammer. So gun. Yeah. Yeah. So that these are cool. available right now. Skin and feed packs in the game. You can go ahead and check both of those out. Um, oh, thank you, Bellswin, for yes. all the gifted subs. Uh, enjoy your emotes, everybody. Um, and then Ooh. on top of that, this weekend, starting now now, is the <laughs> Star Dream Weekend. I mean, literally, it's now it now. It's literally now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, hey, uh, if you liked the Whittle skin and you want to use more Whittle this weekend and use that skin, she's also going to get a buff along with Ashara and a couple of other folks. And if you keep an eye on your email, if you've signed up for our newsletter, you should be getting a free gold star dream chest, which is also really cool because they they put Venerus's hat on top of it. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. I think that's yeah. fun. So and keep I an really eye out for that. that. Uh, check out in the game as well. You can see all the details of all the free buffs you're going to get for uh, these five champions. And then, and then finally, finally, this is all yeah, happening. yay, yay! <laughs> Lizelle is coming to the game. So we kind of spoiled this a little while ago. Although uh, Dupuy spoiled it, and yes. if there's anyone who has the authorization to say this is no longer a spoiler. It's him. So this has kind of been something we've all been waiting for. But now officially, she's coming to the game for Garon's Day. The blog and the video are out right now. And mm -hmm. so you can go to our website and see the entire blog with all the juicy details. Or you can go to our YouTube channel and see the short video that gives you the brief overview. And you can also watch Lazel literally launch herself into the middle of the field and just stun everybody. Mm -hmm because her ultimate is super fun. When I was recording for the video, every time yeah. I'm like, ultimate. It's just, <laughs> it is it is absolutely it's, outstanding. Yeah. 
It's so, so yeah, very Lazelle too. It's just oh, like yeah. if you've been playing Baldur's Gate, like the world at large, apparently. Um, mm-hmm. Seriously, like congrats to Larry. Like I, they've been sharing all these numbers and everything today, and it's just been oh, so yeah. cool seeing what's going on. Uh, but yeah, if you've been enjoying Lazelle in uh, Baldur's Gate three, definitely on Wednesday, come and check her out in Metal Champions because there's some really cool things happening between it. So yeah. Yep. And for all of you who are wondering, because it's it's not just you, I promise it's not just you. It's a Garon's day. There you go. I've had to do this every year. <laughs> People mm-hmm. are like, how do you how do you pronounce that? So yeah, a Garon's yeah. day. Yeah, a Garon's day. And Voronika launched last year on a Garon's day. And now we have Lazel. Lazel. <laughs> we just like to give you the tongue twisters for this particular day, folks. Yep, yep. It's now uh, set. It is a tradition that a Garon's Day is where if you have a champion going into the game that has a slightly difficult to pronounce name, a Garon's Day is for you. (laughs) But yes, check out Lazelle. She is very cool and a lot of fun and will be coming out on Wednesday Mm. when the new adventures, when the new event drops at noon Pacific. And I think that's everything. That's that's it. That's all Uh, for now, folks. Well, for in game news not not for the stream we're still going we're gonna we're... no that was it yeah, bye bye no the other only other thing i was gonna say is we have the marvelous gabe in chat today as our moderator if you have any questions about blazel about idol champions about mini painting um about anything else going on we'll try to answer all of your questions just put the uh question in big caps right before your question and gabe will grab it and stick it in a little backstage document and that way when when i'm working on eyes i don't miss your question it's always the eyes but that's a that's okay it is it's that's the perennial challenge of these minis for me is eyeballs the eyes luckily these are slightly bigger than the other eyeballs and we're going to give them a glowing effect so they're not going to be as you know like little dot dot don't sorry don't do what i just did (laughs) <laughs> like, let me poke my own eye. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, uh, we're going to dive into doing armor work on these minis. Now, Lauren, I know you started up with some on yours, correct? Yeah, I've got Great. the metal. The gun metal. The metal medium. The Yeah. Yeah. Which is so, already given it this really cool. Exactly. Once again, it's darker on my camera than it is in real life, mm-hmm. but it's kind of a real cool metallic sheen to it. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So I'm going to actually jump in now to doing gunmetal myself on my mini um, and adding it to the craggy armor that's going on here. And then what I'll mm. do is I'll go back in and start adding in some silver highlights and everything like that. Now, if you've noticed on the form that I have, there's this little bit of the sword poking through at the bottom of the hand. So that is also going to get the gunmetal, and then I'll go back in with silver and continue the Damascus steel effect that we did on the sword in the first part of this series. Um, so that's the plan for now. So we will. And I will be start joining you. Gunmetal. Yeah, I'm going to be joining you in much of that plan because uh, oh, yeah. I've, as you have seen, I've now removed my hammer. Uh, mm-hmm. Hammer is super cool, but I wanted to go with the flame sword. So I'll be doing the same thing on my hilt to because that Damascus steel effect. And yeah. then what I guess I need to work on is there's this center detail oh, yeah, the... armor. Yeah. I think it's, I, I'm not exactly sure if this. So if that's, yeah. you can have fun with an accent color and do hammered copper and Ooh. then go back with the darker gold. I forget what his name is. Hold on one second. The um, glorious gold and use it as a highlight. So that could be a really neat way to kind of add a little bit of warmth with all the cool yeah. tones check going on for the armor. I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Okay, cool. Okay. So then there is some hammer. sneaky bits of armor okay. hidden up here in the hair. Me, nope, hammered. Come on. I'm going to find hammered copper eventually. One way or another. There it is. I'm going hammered to find copper, you said glorious gold. Yeah, for your highlighting. There we go. Is there anywhere else on the armor? No, I don't think there's the I've got the belt, but that's not armor. That's a that's another cloth thing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um but yeah. Yeah, you could treat that like braided leather if you wanted to. I think that'll that'll work. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right, great. There. Oh, and we already have a couple questions in chat. Ooh. That's awesome. 
Um, Bellswin uh, asks, Lauren, Orkira, Orkira just made a cameo in-game. Did you enjoy it? What part did you get to play in the new adventure? Um, what part did I get to... So, let's see how to say this. Trevor writes our adventures, and Trevor is awesome. And Trevor's the one who gets to decide in the adventures when you're going through the storyline who who are the champions that are telling the story and we usually have at least a couple core champions in there but depending on what's going on uh other things will be thrown in and mm -hmm. if i'm remembering correctly something happened in the storyline in light of xerixis and where we're now in a place that orkira has been before and I'm I'm talking in circles so that I don't accidentally spoil anything yeah. for anyone. Yeah. Um, and so I knew in advance that she might show up in game as far as like a speaker in the in the storyline. But it was it was very nice to see. Yeah. And there you go. That's how I'm gonna not spoil anything. I, think I did have this well moment done. though <laughs> when Bellswin was just like, or Kira made a cameo in game. I'm like, where did she? Wait, where did she show up? Mm -hmm. What did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, wait, I know. <laughs> there you go. Um, and Star Chaser 43 actually has a question for you that mm -hmm. will give you a chance to talk about some of the stuff you talked about yesterday. Ooh. Isn't Voronika going to have an anniversary soon? Yes, next week. She's going to be yeah. uh, back in again. So if you haven't gotten her yet, you'll get a chance next week to also get uh, Veronica along with Lazel, and she will be getting a new skin that we revealed yesterday. And I could get that pulled up in a couple of shakes if you want me to, uh, to show you what that's gonna look like. Cause we did share it yesterday on Idle Insights. Uh, Lauren, I had a grand time talking about my yeah. time at D&D &D in a castle as a DM. Uh, but yeah, I can get the skin pulled up and shared with you all today if, if that sounds good. I just literally put paint on my brush. So let me get this section done and then I can go back in and kind of pull that up. Yeah, people can, it'll yeah. be it'll, it'll be a nice thing for people to look forward to because it is a gorgeous skin. I am so happy with that. Like when I started Good. thinking about what I wanted to do, I was like, I want it to be like this. And it was Anita who worked on it um, and she totally got it. So I was very happy nice. about that one. Yeah. So And I love all the champions uh, or a, a lot of the champions, I should say, when a skin is added, it's not usually just, okay, here's a new skin for this form and done. Mm -hmm. There's often some other fun things that need to happen. Yeah. Uh, and for Voronika, she essentially gets two skins because of her two different forms. Yeah. And I just love how both of them are not only distinctly different than what her normal thing is, mm -hmm. but also work so well together. Yeah, yeah. I, all I'm going to say is the ultimate on this skin is really, really cool. And I was so thrilled with how it came out that the idea worked. Um, yeah. I'm not going to reveal it. I'm not going to reveal it. You're going to have to check it out in the game. Um, okay, so here it is with the gunmetal being applied onto the armor. Nice. Um, I am purposely leaving it slightly thinned out so it still gets that sheen, but it has a more worn metal look to it. And the shadow layers play through. Uh, which means I'm not going to need to go back and do highlighting work for this because I'm happy with how this is already drying up. You can see those lovely craggy details without having to go back in and do dry brushing on top of it. So that is the plan there. And now let me see if I can get the image uh, pulled up for Nika's new skin. And I'm going to look up and grab more questions because I saw there were more questions, but I'm in a, I'm in a, tricky spot here where i'm totally trying fair. to make sure that i don't get copper all over my nice gunmetal yeah that's fair because as much as this okay, copper so is cool there it is that's the voronika skin which probably just yeah. popped up for everyone large and in charge because i had a chance to scale it down <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no i love it i'm here for it yes show it that's off that's it that's that's what it looks like and it's so gorgeous and cool and it's the cosmic nightmare of Horonika. so do do check it out should you have a chance on yeah. wednesday wednesday 12 p.m is when it'll be available in the in-game shop all right now back to painting this hot number 
one of the cool things about this mini mm -hmm. that is that is also a challenge i'll say is because it's so big it's got a lot of its um details have mm -hmm. height yeah so it's like so i'm painting this middle armored section and i what i'm doing which is why it's hard for me to look up is getting the edges mm -hmm. and just making sure that those actually get coated in the color that i want and it's really yeah. it's really a neat detail on it but it's also a little tricky yeah just just it's, a slight a bit thing. tricky yeah. it's definitely a thing i get what, exactly what you mean especially with this one because it has such craggy armor it's making sure you're getting this gunmetal on all the edges yeah um, but also not letting it pool up too much which you know trying to avoid that and for the belt i'm just going to keep it with the gunmetal as well if you wanted to you could do a brighter silver but for this one because it's the same texture i'm gonna have that belt done the same that makes sense yeah okay now i can oof Oh, mm -hmm. hi, TTRP Gifts. Welcome Hello. to the chat. Uh, they say, oh my God, Veronica looks amazing. Thank you. Um, let's see. Oh. <laughs> Rough Rider 1995 asked before we, we showed off the skin, is oh. there a new Veronica skin to highlight? So I, I, I appreciate the fact that you were on board with where we were going. Um... Uh, Kinra Vip wants to know, are either of you familiar with the old Universal Monster Movie character model kits? If so, which is your favorite? I am I am not. Not familiar with this one at all, no. What I mean, it this? sounds cool because that would yeah. be like the mummy and Frankenstein and mm -hmm. all the the actual classic classics. Dracula. Dracula. Okay. And not Strahd Dracula, but like Dracula Dracula. Yeah. Old Lon Chaney Dracula. Mm-hmm. But no. Uh you have some more details about it, like what it's all yeah, about. Universal. And it's a character model kit. So I have to assume it's not just the mini that it's like a Yeah. You know, uh I mean it sounds like it would be the equivalent to the frameworks stuff that we have where you yeah, can do some yeah. customization, but I mean let us know more yeah um for sure this isn't blipped on my, my radar at all so i'm curious yeah very, very curious. i mean just thinking through some of those old monsters which is my favorite i feel like the mummy of of those those are the three that i'm remembering right now i think there's mm. more but uh the mummy was... frankenstein and Dracula. Yeah, and the creature from the Black Lagoon, right? Oh yeah. Franken uh Frankenstein's monster. Yep. Um who else was there? Chat Bride oh. of Frankenstein, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. I feel Did we like say the werewolf, right? No, we didn't say the werewolf. The werewolf. Oh. Forgot yeah. Um Yeah, Wolfman. I'm probably gonna have to go Wolfman, I think. Yeah. I am, um, and not just because I'm playing a druid in Diablo that is a werewolf with wolves doing all kinds of wolf things because it's ridiculous and fun and I love it so much. Mm -hmm. Love it. Here I got, it. I got one of those. So when you, when you get the companion mm -hmm. wolves, you usually get two, and then I got a thing that I could add onto one of my armor pieces that gives me a third one. And then I got another thing that's like, if I get into a fight, a fourth one shows up. Oh, so wow. I'm often cruising around with literally a wolf pack. And it's so oh, that's fun. fun. It's that so ready. cool. I feel super cool. I like I it. I think I got, I mean, I also got hammered copper on the hair, but we'll, we'll deal with well, that. That's later. why we save the hair for later, because that will go in with a matte color, which should yeah. help. Um, I'm also for the gauntlets and everything. I am probably going to go in and do a little bit of glorious gold, like play up what we did here on the armband, um, for like the gauntlets and things here. So, yeah. Again, bringing in some warmth between the metals. 
Okay, and I think I'm going to take care of the here. <laughs> yeah, all the details on this thing often mean like, ah, I think I'm yeah. going to take care of painting the belt before I go back and do the Fair. dry brushing just to make yeah. sure that is dry. There my letter brown. There my letter brown. <laughs> Oh, uh, Billum mm -hmm. Smith eighty four also says Phantom of the Opera and King Kong two. Oh, that's good to know. I did not know. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm hmm. Yep. And Lurking Writers got the list: Frankenstein's monster, Bride of Frankenstein's monster, Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Invisible Man. That's the In one. That yeah. Which would be the easiest mini to paint? Just the glasses. Look at my Invisible Man mini. <laughs> uh, let's That's see. all you get. Oh, Ken Vip also has a reply. Frankenstein's monster. And I'm sorry, I got to do it. Frankenstein. Frank uh, That's about, what I was about to do. Yeah. The, the Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Uh, is about 10 inches tall. Oh, Ooh. I'm on my second one. Nice. Okay. In addition to the ones you mentioned, they also had Lon Chaney's Phantom and a generic witch. Interesting. God, 10 that's inches. That's a. Uh, I can see why they call it like a model kit. Yeah. Because that's that not a mini now. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are cool. That's. I'm going to have to look those up and see. Um, yeah. yeah. I think for me, I'd probably gravitate towards um, oh, probably Dracula. Mm. I remember watching Dracula when I was younger. Uh oh. Sneeze. Sorry. <laughs> Plus. Oh, I didn't grab my mixing brush. The ragweed is out and it's making itself oh, known. I'm so sorry. And I'm Ugh. getting to all the stuff up steezels. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Poor Hemingway's Ugh. getting it too. He's been sneezing Aww. like a little. I had to get him special treats to help with it. I'm like, okay, you need the lysine treats. <laughs> He's like, pss, pss, pss. You, you know sneezes? what? You deserve special treats for having to deal with that too. <laughs> I'm getting pizza. <laughs> well, pizza I can eat pizza, not not true cheesy pizza, but they have like a cheese alternative pizza. So. I, I think that's still pizza. Yeah, I'm gonna get that. Yeah, I'm gonna get that. So speaking of Frankenstein, yes. uh, uh, my my lovely partner Luke has been watching History of the World Part Two. Oh, fun. Um, so here's the thing. I'm mm -hmm. I'm a very big Mel Brooks fan. I've loved the vast majority right. of his stuff. I I keep walking in on him watching because it's it's in like episodes. It's in right uh, right, right chunks. Right. Yeah, and I keep walking in and I'm having a an unfortunate. There'll be a thirty minute episode and I'll find like one of the skits real funny and the rest of it I'm just like eh. oh not aging well. Oh. Well, oh, so no, this is the new one that he did. The oh, new oh, history okay. of the world. I'm sorry, I missed the, one. Yes. Um, and you know what? It's interesting that you say that because the more I thought about why am I not having as much fun with this as I feel like I should, mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that I don't find as fun or as funny are things that won't age well. Like, uh, I think gotcha. a lot of Mel Brooks's movies, they they really have a lot of timeless jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he tends to stay away from stuff that is too um, on topic. Like, oh, you're only going to get this if you've, you know, if it's the 1980s. Right. And a lot of the stuff in the series is very much like, like they just did a mm -hmm. play on the real housewives of, of wherever. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, eh. oh, but you're, the armor is looking cool. Yeah, I think I'm pretty much done with the armor, which is what I want. And as you can see, like I said, I'm not going to go back in and do highlight work because as this is drying, those shadow layers are playing through the metal. And that, quite frankly, is the type of look I want for this one. In fact, I'll be very surprised if we go back in and even do any wash on this mini. Um, yeah. At least for mine. Um, so now I'm going to go in. I'm going to do the edge work around these medallions and as well as the gauntlets and the bits around the shins. And I think what I want to do, again, just to kind of play up some more warm tones, I'm going to go in with glorious gold and get those. So we kind of have like this combination of the cold, hard, steelish silver, and then the warmer uh, gold tones, again, to play off the flame factor of this being a fire giant. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. 
So I'm actually going to switch to a more detail style brush as opposed to the round brush I was using too. Just for a wee bit more control. Sorry, had to fix a quick mistake. It's totally okay. It's like, I right. don't want leather brown there. That's fair. That's not where you want it to go. Oh, fair, look, fair, we've, fair. we've got, because uh, yeah, it is a free time gate weekend. That's, yes. we, we forgot to talk about that. Uh, so Bellswin comes in with a question about mm -hmm. which champion should we pick? Free time gate weekend, Torgar, Havilar, or Nearest? Um, it's been a hot minute since we've done the free time gate weekend chat. So I'll give the spoiler. I'll give the, mm -hmm. not the spoiler. I'll give the, the, the warning in advance. There's no wrong answer. You'll get a lot of answers from chat. You'll hear us give our opinions. In the end, there's no wrong answer. It's because you're going to want to get them all anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, don't be, you know, if you put a suggestion in chat and other people put different suggestions, it's okay. And a lot of it kind of depends on what kind of champion you're going for. Uh, if you're looking for a DPS, if you're looking for something in a specific seat, if you're looking for, you know, if you've got a checklist of things you would like to have options for, mm -hmm. um, barring knowing any of that, Havilar and Farida are two that end up in my rotation constantly um so i would definitely go go for havilar especially if you have farida because the two of them mm -hmm. the two of them kick butt that's exactly it, what i was gonna say yeah although the nice thing about uh Neris is that she is um very flexible about where uh they work in the formation mm-hmm because like positional formation abilities can be real strong, but it's also nice right. to sometimes have a champion that like I can just put them anywhere, and that mm -hmm. that uh, spiritual weapon is going to do its job. Yeah, I like that. That's a good answer. <laughs> I'm glad I watered this down because I'm I'm having the same joy with the belt that you did. Where oh, the nice. shadow layers are coming through real nice, and so I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to blot those out. Uh, Rough Rider nineteen ninety five wants to know when might we see a Herengon Paladin with a big kite shield in Idle Champions. That's a very specific request. Yeah, are you ask? Okay, if you're asking in a roundabout way about a specific character that's out there. Uh, that has flown over my head, and I apologize. Um, otherwise, if you're not asking about a specific character, I don't know. I love Herringon. I wish there were more in the game, and uh, I can definitely pass the request along. Herringon Paladin with a big kite shield. I mean, that sounds super cool. Sounds fun. And I think Herringon can still do their leap even if they're wearing heavy armor and carrying a big giant shield i don't think it hampers that leap at all so that's it's actually kind of a terrifying idea of a right? big armored bunny paladin with a giant shield just going i'm a coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just played a uh herring gun i mean if this is what you're you're referencing uh, i played i didn't play herringon Mm. Neb played a Herringon in a game. Oh, fun. Uh, my character played a character. <laughs> and honestly, the yeah. Oh, it was it was fun. This is now like the fourth time I've done the right. I'm playing a character in a D D game that is in game Play playing character. a D D game, so they're playing a character. I feel like I'm developing a skill set that is incredibly niche. Uh that is and they were a Herringon paladin, but the the kite shield was not actually that important to her kit. Hmm. The horse was. Interesting. Yeah. Because uh, the horse was a clue to the reference that Neb was basing her paladin on. And that's oh. all I'll say. Because that was the most recent episode of Children of Arte. So, okay, cool. So yeah, Rough Rider, if that's what you were referencing, I appreciate it. But... 
nah, that was that was just a one off fun character we got to play. Yeah, it's it's a fun um thought experiment to go, uh -huh. okay, if my character was gonna play D D, what kind of character would they play? And it's both times that I've done it, or I should say all four times, uh two with Orkira, three with Orkira. Yeah. yeah, and one with Neb. Um, thinking through that process has illuminated things that I hadn't thought about. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. All right, so I'll ask. If Voronika was to play Dungeons & Dragons, what kind of character mm -hmm. would she play? Oh, um, she wouldn't play. She would DM. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That totally makes sense. <laughs> yep. She would happily DM that game. And I'm going to look up at the other questions in a second, but I'm in a, a tricky spot with oh, yeah. this belt. It's like chain mail. There's all these. Yeah, the links going on. Yeah, all the the braids on this in this case, but like that mm -hmm. that same feel of like oh, link, 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 link. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I am oh, definitely happy with this gold though for the gauntlets. I'm liking how this is playing off. These are other colors. Uh, we got not a serious question, but I don't okay. know if that is the name of the person asking or if that is just the because I I don't have a name here. So anonymous person. Not asking a serious question, although I will give a serious answer. Mm -hmm. How come my newsletter took 14 minutes to get to my email? So I appreciate you being like, not a serious question. But like I said, serious answer. We have a lot of people on our newsletter list. And it actually takes a while to send them all out. So it is not unheard of for people to not get their newsletters for like an hour or two. Mm -hmm. It's... It's a weird thing. You think like, well, but it's all digital and it shouldn't matter. And but I mean, it's just, it's just bandwidth. Yeah, it's it's essentially like imagine the newsletters are all um, trains that have to go out at different times, essentially, because you have to get everything loaded into a particular train. And while they all say they're going to be launching around the same time, you have to make sure the track is clear enough for everything to go through and process properly. So it takes a little bit of time for all of the emails to get the newsletter because it has to just go out mm. and uh yeah there's a lot that happens with that one so yeah you, can, you, you you know it starts around noon and probably like all the trains have left the station by one <laughs> yeah type of thing that that's actually a really good metaphor i like that there you go it's a really good explanation and if i remember correctly it's uh they're sent in the order that you have signed up for the newsletter yeah. so if you're like me, and I know I am, I signed up for the newsletter years and years ago. So I, I do tend to get mine pretty darn quick. But if you've signed up just recently, it may take a couple extra minutes. But you will get it, we promise. It's on its way. It's it's chugging along. Mm -hmm. Nice little surprise in your inbox. And for those who haven't signed up for the newsletter, I highly recommend it. And we promise to not like spam your inbox. Yeah. You'll get one a week for the most part, and they'll include a free chest, which is always fun. And then mm -hmm. every once in a blue moon, you might get another one. Uh, but usually when that happens, it's because we're announcing some big fun thing. Yeah. So, but otherwise, just, just the one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think of that every time I get uh, some other emails in my inbox from places I'm signed up for. Oh, Lord. Yeah, where I'm I like, have... well, I want to stay signed up to you because I want some of these, but I just don't want all of them. I have an email that I'll use for like ordering stuff specifically because like sometimes your inbox just gets inundated. Mm -hmm. And this one company has started sending like five emails a day. Oh, jeez. I'm like, okay, I need to figure out what's going on with your list and get myself pulled off of some of these because I don't need all of the updates and information things. It's like, really? This is overkill. Yeah, five a day that mm -hmm. I feel like there's a marketing person in that 
business who's really upset right now because there's right i can't imagine anyone wanting that many emails from a company no. a day no matter how much you love yeah the product that they're selling yep it's like oh i see you purchased something from this category guess what's happening in this category today and then because i've bought from other categories they send emails about each category separately i'm like oh my lord stop oh. it oi and then they're like oh you're browsing for this and like check out what's new in this category that you were browsing and it's like oh good lord <laughs> yeah and that's why a of pennies at it make it stop <laughs> and that's that is why because i have the same thing it's good to have an email address mm -hmm. that's that is a working email address that i check on a regular basis but oh, yeah. it is for signing up for a business when i know uh Oh, I may be getting spam or like my utilities and mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like, OK, I can't really block any of the emails coming from, you know, my electricity company. And so right. I'll just use this email so that when the spam comes, I'm not getting it in my main. Yeah. All right. Before I move on to that part of the belt, let me. Oh, Kinra Vip says um, that they tweeted a pic of five of the model kits to me. You know what? Oh, I nice. can take a second and go to Zitter. Let's see. <laughs> do, 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 do. Let us find. Uh, nope, that's your awesome picture. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, those are those are real cool. They all come with. Oh, a really distinct base. So uh -huh. like uh Thematic? Wolfman is uh, yeah and oh, has neat. their name on it too. Oh neat. Yeah, so Dracula is in a uh, graveyard. Uh Wolfman oh, is like on some rocks with a skull. Creature from the Black Lagoon is in a lagoon. In a lagoon. God, 10 inches. That's a decent size. Like that's that's the length of my forearm. Yeah. Between wrist and elbow. Uh, Very cool. Originally made by Aurora in the 60s. And yeah. for, for those who might be on the younger side, we do mean the 1960s. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, that is super cool. Thank you for uh, passing that along. That is... Yeah, very cool. That is neat to see. And yeah, I guess a lot of those, those kind of things were called model kits for a very long mm -hmm. time. Mm-hmm. all right almost done with the belt yeah this is gonna take a little while what i'm doing right now yeah oh we got another time gate question from the moles cool. revenge um melf or stokey i have six plus champions in each slot Ooh. Ooh, melf yeah. i really like stokey but yeah, Melf. Melf is going to be more useful in the long run in a lot of places. Sorry, Stokey. I shouldn't feel bad. Like we're, we're a like Stokey the stand group. <laughs> yeah, but I always feel a little bad when I'm like, "Oh, this this champion, ah, you can you can go with this other one for now." I always feel bad when I say that, even if it's mm. true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Once again, you want them all. Yes. Gimme, 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 gimme. <laughs> all right. I've got two more of these How's things that I got to get. I'm almost done. I'm just at the part where it's all under the arm. Under arm pity fun. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just trying to make sure I don't. That I don't paint something I didn't mean to paint here in the home stretch. That's totally fair. I am definitely liking this glorious gold as the edging for the larger bits because that just gives it a nice little pop on top of the darker armor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a fun oh, one. Oh, that's real nice. Yeah. Can't and it adds, it adds to that um, magic runic feel. Mm-hmm. Which I am There's here a really for. unhappy crow outside. Oh no! 
I don't know if any of you can hear it. I just there's this super unhappy crow just outside yelling. Like I'm so sorry. I don't know why you're upset, but um, please, get please my stop. Snacks. Okay. So that that's I got belt. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm. Yeah, that's looking good. And while that dries, I will glorious gold up the copper. GG. Mm. Glorious gold, GG. Uh, some call me Chris asks, does Melf even give that much speed though? Um, Melf gives a their their speed buff is decent. Um they offer what I like about Melf is they offer some positional buffs that are not unique, but you don't get very often. Um that idea of like being up front and having people behind, but you don't have to be in the front lines. And there's, it's a little tricky sometimes to place them, but their, their support buffs are real nice. I know there's ways of making their speed mechanic just, just crank, but I, when I'm putting together a, a formation that's trying to go fast, I tend to go for the easy speed champions like shandy yeah. she's like i'm just gonna put shandy in here and she'll make everybody go fast gotta go fast gotta go fast mm. all right was i good and pulled out glorious gold i was yay oh geez here we go math looking writer Nothing. says thousand levels on melf equals a nine times boost to the three speed mechanics he offers. Go wild like Sean did, and he can break your game. Yeah, and I think that's my problem, is I do not necessarily have super high levels on my on my mouth. Mm. Which I should change. I should I should level him up. I should give Sean a run for his mouth money. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh salt and call me Chris. Says, I don't have Shandy, but I'm getting Humon today. Humon is good. Humon That's is real fine. good. Honestly, my favorite thing to do with Humon has nothing to do with their speed mechanic, kind of. Uh, but it's to put them as close to the front lines as I can, if uh -huh. not on the front line. Because uh -huh. if you put them in the right spot, the um, I don't remember which of the kobolds it is, but it's the one that there's a chance you'll drop double quest rewards or Ooh. double chests. And mm -hmm. it's, and it is a speed mechanic because all of a sudden one kill counts for three and all sorts of stuff. But I just, oh, cool. I just like every once in a while getting through a, a place and then three chests drop. And I'm like, Ooh. thank you, human. That is fun. Yeah, Dilettante for the win says Shandy's speed mechanic works even with poor gear. Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I really like her. She's just easy to make work. But there's a lot of the champions like Melf, like uh, others, that if you put in a little bit more work than sometimes mm -hmm. I do, you can get some really, really awesome results. That's what I always find cool when you have different play styles talking and seeing what people are doing with their particular champions and the leveling and et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's, it's enjoyable to hear the, oh, I got so-and-so and so-and-so and I put them in this formation because I just want to see the character characters together. I'm like, oh, okay, that's really fun. Yep. And then the ones who get very more uh, mechanical and number driven and they're explaining, I'm like, dang, that's impressive. Yeah. And I appreciate those people because in those mm -hmm. times and where I'm not just like, oh, well, this will be fine. You know, throw these mm -hmm. champions together. But I actually run yeah. into a wall and I'm like, to the Discord. Yep, exactly. Help, Discord. Help me. You're my only hope. Yeah, and help the help the Discord is very helpful for sure. Oh, wait, I got um Discord.gg slash idle champions. Uh, there, I did the thing. Do the drinking. Ah. <laughs> uh. Uh, Dilettante for the win says, my speed formation's guilty pleasure is Viconia. I just giggle at seeing the screen bloom with purple circles and the mobs helping me out, right? Like, I'm just going to take these uh, mm -hmm. monsters that are attacking me and now they're my friend. Right. In quotes. 
Yeah, it's one of the reasons I also like uh, BBEG. Mm-hmm. Watching the the watching the field just fill up with shambling zombies. Oh God, it's amazing. <laughs> Setting off his alt alt and getting even more shambling zombies. What did you, you put Miria and BBG in your formation, right? And the screen just filled up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, so it's Viconia, Miria, uh, Miria and BBG. And then there's someone else. Nordum? Was that it? Well, if you set Nordum. off Nordum's ult, then that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nordum and, uh, <laughs> Walnut set off their ults and just watch. Yeah. Watch the screen. Uh, but there's a third one. I know. I think Mars was fooling around with, with something like that. That just it got. Oh, Narak and Viconia. Yep. Oh, looking writer says Miria, BBEG, Narak and Viconia. Nordum with his ult can freeze my game. Oh, it's a bit much. It's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see if I can. I need to get myself a smaller flat brush for spots mm. like this in between the hair, which oh, I know yeah. I can get on the hair right now, but right. that's fair. That is absolutely fair. <laughs> okay. Um, Unseplorion, Unseprion, Unseprion, there we go. As a new player, welcome. Which would be better for my free time gate? Beetle and Grim, Fen, or Dinar? Oh. Ooh. Shoot. Okay. Fen is awesome. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're looking to collect the Black Dice Society characters, I'd go with Fen. If you're not looking at getting Fen immediately, uh, or the Black Dice Society characters immediately, um, and you're new because you're new you're probably not doing too many of the patron uh, challenges yet I'm making a guess if I'm wrong and you have started doing patron stuff Fen 100% if you haven't started doing patron stuff yet I might suggest Dinar he's going to be more useful to you in general mm -hmm. and is just fun to use as well but as soon as you start doing the patron stuff for Mert and Vajra and uh, Strahd and go oh, jeez I've lost the last one Mert and Vajra and Strahd and uh, Zariel there we go then absolutely Fen because Fen helps make your patron challenges go faster so so that is my suggestion depending on on how new you are to the game and sometimes new that doesn't necessarily mean you haven't already blown through a whole bunch of stuff and are mm -hmm. grinding through patron challenges. Okay, so I've got... So I've got the middle bit done with the... It's not going to show up as well on my camera, obviously, but the mm -hmm. copper and then the dry brushing. Nice. Nice. Um, and I got the belt done. Okay. Is it worth doing any kind of dry brushing on the belt you could do a very light um treatment of bone white over leather brown to kind of give Ooh. it a more worn look to the belt if you want i might do that especially to help with some of the places where i wasn't as good about yeah. keeping out of the the recess yeah, totally do that yeah you can absolutely do that i say go for it then let's do it I am trying to paint into this very, very tight spot right now and hoping and praying that my brush lands where I need it to. Oh, yeah, with that, that chain mail? Yeah, Ooh. it's where you wish you could move it, but you can't. <laughs> Bone white. There we go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Miko says that spell jammer whittle skin is bad for deciding. I want her, I want to have her wear it, and the other she got too. Listen, this is why I 100% agree with you. Turn on for any of the champions. I turn them on for almost all of them. Turn on the, um, I don't remember what it's called, but in each champion's character sheet, you can tell it, hey, every time I start a new adventure, 
pick one of the skins that I have available at random. Mm -hmm. And it's super fun. It is cool. There's only a couple that I... I have left in one specific skin and I can't remember who they are at the moment, but there were reasons. There were reasons. <laughs> there, was, there were reasons. I don't remember what they are. I mean, I've even got Orkira's randomness turned on, which is probably good because I kept going back to her Shadowfell skin. I'm like, I'm just going to leave this forever. <laughs> Fun. All right, I'm almost done. I just have one gauntlet left, but definitely liking the gold with the runes. That's yeah. Fun. That's a fun look. I'm here for it. Whew. I also need to All right, dry brushing. I'm hunching. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah, Bellswin, not the owlbear skin, mostly because, uh, I mean, it's, it's adorable and I love it, but I hear Orkira in the back of my head being upset there's fur. <laughs> Because, yeah. I was not expecting that response. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it, it's a weird thing when you got characters living in the back of your head. Who every once in a while, just like, but, the, but there's fur there. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, fine. Yeah. I mean, oh. that was that. That continues to be one of my favorite moments with um, Becca Scott playing Tatiana uh -huh. Uh -huh. when we all got turned into owl bears. And I, uh -huh. I don't remember what we were. I think we were waiting for Bayloth to drop numbers. We were waiing for like math or something else to happen. Yeah, math thing was and, going on. Yeah, and uh, Orkira started complaining about fur because you know if you're think about it, if you're a scaly creature by nature, yeah. and all you've ever known is scales, suddenly having fur has to feel weird. That's fair. And, that is absolutely and fair. Tatiana's explanation of it's like grass for the body. <laughs> oh, Lord. It took all of my willpower to not crack up, which is it's like grass for the body. I'm like, uh huh. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's disgusting. Oh, good God. That was too funny. It was so much fun. So, yeah, that's. As much as I, I love when her uh, owlbear skin comes up, but I can't keep her in it all the time because, yeah. Oh. Uh -oh. I did it. So One moment, please. Oh. Oh, did something get attached to the camera? Yeah, we're going to show off um, the Spelljammer skins while I fix this. Oh, nice. Because I just accidentally popped the camera off. I didn't mean to. Oh, okay. I was trying okay, to that's angle fine. it. Yeah. We can we can we can enjoy Todd's face on a on a bomb. Uh-huh. <laughs> I do like the Voltron of all of the auto gnomes. Right? That is lots of fun. As a kid of the 80s, I am absolutely here for it. Yeah. I used to have it's one of the few toys that I wish I still had. Um I had all of the Voltron lions mm -hmm. that would, you could fold them up in the right way and put them together and it would form Voltron. Mm -hmm. And I remember, they probably weren't, but I was a kid. I remember being impressed by how heavy and like the weighty they felt. Like it felt like real metal. And, yeah. And the lions just looked real cool. I usually mm -hmm. had the, the toys sitting around as just the lions, but that was, yeah. that was a ton of fun. I was a big fan of my Voltron toys. Yeah. That and Castle Grayskull. Ooh, nice. Mm-hmm. I did have He-Man on the the Battle Cat, but I Ooh. never got Castle Grayskull. That's cool. Yeah. I literally had Barbie Dreamhouse and Castle Grayskull sitting next to each other at one point. <laughs> <laughs> that sums me up. Yep. 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 Then no, we are going D and D appeals, <laughs> right? We are going to see the Barbie movie tonight. Oh, fun! Luke, Luke had <laughs> yesterday. Luke was like, "So, how long can you get away for lunch?" I'm like, "Why?" Well, you know, we could go see the Barbie movie. I'm like, "I don't, I don't have that long of a lunch, but let's chat." Right. <laughs> 
Let's figure out the when it would work, because that sounds good. Yeah, there is. Uh, we're going to a fairly late showing, like a 945 mm-hmm. or so, uh, because that was the one that had the seats that we we wanted, because if we're going to go to the movie theater, then you might as well get the nice seats that mm-hmm. are right there in the place. Mm-hmm. Very cool. He d- so I just saw Man- Manu Lu uh, talking about the Barbie Heimer. Uh, I know he wants to see. Op- I mean, Luke is a cinephile, so he wants to see all yes. the movies. I'm not necessarily interested in Oppenheimer, uh, and he's he's going to grab that when it comes out on streaming. So we're not doing the the Barbie Heimer thing. But That's... I kind of respect the people who who did. Like, yeah, even the ones it's... who like got dressed for Barbie and like switched it up to look appropriate for Oppenheimer. I was like, how? What? Yeah, that was fun Tur- to see the people even like getting gussied up for it to bring out an old fashioned word. Yeah. All right, so I've got the belt is in good shape. I've got this center section of the armor is in good shape. Um, I guess I'm trying to figure out what makes sense to work on next. Part of me wants to go after the the rest of the handle of the sword so that I can make it the yeah. Do oh, the, absolutely, you could do that. The Damascus That's, steel thing. Yeah. So that was silver gun kind of man. gun metal. Gun metal. Yeah, face and gunmetal. Okay. And then do the streaks of the silver, which I'm about to start as well as soon as I finish up this particular gauntlet. Silver. Okay. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Ooh. I'm liking that a lot. Gives it some yeah, that looks real cool. Interest. Yeah. Especially when you put the sword in with it, because that's where it starts to play off all the colors that are going on with the sword. So, see, that's yes. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I want. All right, especially the the purple of your of uh, the cloth. The, yeah, the cloth really. I don't know. There's something about that that really makes the rest of that sword pop. It looks super yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm gonna jump to silver now as well and do that little bit of the handle. So it looks like the Damascus Damascus steel. And that's literally just taking a detail brush and doing little streaks across the metal. And I got to do the the gun metal first. So, but it's it's small. It's small. Yeah. Small. Also, I looked over and I know Chad is now talking about eighties toys. Uh huh. And ooh, that is that is a fun danger topic, right? Y'all, some of our toys got like banned. <laughs> mm-hmm. and they're not even talking about those they're, they're still talking about right? like action figures and stuff we haven't even gotten into like the easy bake oven stuff darts. oh lawn darts holy crap remember those i do and we all had that friend who tossed it straight up into the air and stood there like mm-hmm. waiting for it to come down <laughs> yep yep or knew mm-hmm. someone who um, was was too interested in throwing them at people instead of right? tossing them in a game. Yes, mm-hmm. that's not good. That's no. definitely not good. Um, let me see here. Oh, that's right. I'm going to go back to the glorious gold and do that for the diadem on her forehead. Oh, yeah. Forehead. I'm going to do that while I'm waiting for the gunmetal to dry. That makes nice. sense. Nice. Yeah. Although I'm going to use a much smaller brush. Yes, little detail brush for this for sure. Get this going. Also make sure I'm catching all parts of it. The Bellswin brings up Constructicons. Oh. Let's see. What about Shrinky Dinks? Are we Shrinky Dinks? <gasps> had those like once or twice i don't remember playing with those too much oh i loved them yeah, lurky rider brings up transformers which of course if you're gonna go voltron you're also gonna think about transformers Belzin um, talks about transformers wow. uh let's see oh yeah <laughs> psychosis 28 dinobots were my jam grimlock smash i huh? did hear that the most recent um uh, Transformers movie 
that had the Dinobots, that the mm-hmm. Dinobots was the best part, which doesn't oh, surprise fun. me. I had one of the Transformers. I forget who it was by name at the moment, but it was yeah. the one that was like the red Corvette. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. I was able to put it together twice as the Transformer, but I could not get it to go back into the Corvette style. So basically I had it as a Corvette for like a couple times and then it just stayed as the Transformer form. Aw. Yeah. Yeah, not not all of those toys were made incredibly well. Yeah. Some of them could not quite stand up to any use. Not not even like hard use. Just just any use. Like you took one look at it, it's like, ha ha, bye. Yeah. You saw me, I'm out. Transformed me once. I did see in person mm-hmm. uh very briefly while I was at San Diego Comic Con. Because I I basically avoided the show floor because that's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but I did swing by uh, a couple of places and I saw that um, the new the the T Rex that turns mm. into I've forgotten the Transformers name and I feel bad because it's like the one of the main guys. I I feel like I've let my entire eighties down. Uh, but He's they okay. have one of those. It's huge. It's like 14, 16 inches. Wow. And it it does the whole responding to voice commands. And it will transform back and forth. Like just Stop. by itself. There's Stop. video out with it. So you can look it up. But seeing it in person, it's actually kind of impressive in oh, person. Neat. Very cool. And it's much faster. It's a much faster transformation than I thought, because that's the other thing. When I saw the uh, the video of it, um, I kind of wondered, like, how much of this is sped up? How much of mm-hmm. this is, you know, this, that, and the other thing? And then watching it in person, just just do it. Oh, cool. I'm like, okay, this that's is cool. Uh, the price tag is not cool, no, but you know cool. what? Sometimes you get what you pay for, and so I can yeah. I can respect that. All right, I'm going to have fun, and I'm going to actually paint these little bits around the end of the braids in the gold as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm still working on the crown. Totally okay. I used silver as an accent for a secondary color pop at the top. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm trying to hunt down all those little bands to gold them up. (laughs) Grimlock, thank you. Grimlock was earlier in the chat, but uh, thank you, Bellsman Looking Writer. Grimlock. There we go. Misty sold. Yeah. I think there's another one out there of Optimus Prime. I think that's a slightly older one Mm. uh, who transforms into the, the, the truck. But the one I saw right. live and in person, they literally, the only reason I was able to see it is they literally had a stand set up mm-hmm. that was like a, a, a huge table that that's all it was, was just the toy. Oh, wow. Oh, I think wow. they had two of them and just going through the transforming and, and they, they also have uh, audio cues and sounds and all sorts oh, of stuff. Neat. But that was... That was usually, that was the thing that got, I think, in my opinion, in the few moments that I was there, the mm-hmm. most attention was when they were transforming, which makes sense. That's really cool. Toys nowadays are wild, y'all. They really are. They really are. There we go. Got to get the inside and the outside of the crown. Right. Cannot forget the inside. Okay. Yep, liking all of this. Liking all of this. So we're getting there. Yeah. So we have the hair and the uh, skin to do. Yep. It's going to be a lot of basically glaze work. We're going to be thinning out these paints. To really let those shadow layers do the work for us. However, 
Where oh, did I put it? Here I put it. So this is the official um, art for the mini that I'm working on. So obviously I gave it my own spin with a little bit more color. <laughs> but it's super respect. cool, yeah. Yeah, but you can see there's this lovely um, vibrant orange hair going on and then this sort of darker grayish tone uh, for the skin. So I'm gonna kind of nod to that. Um, in that respect. Okay, so I'm with you, I just finished hair. the crown. Oh yeah. The hair I believe we're gonna go with cobalt scale is what I was thinking would work nicely. Okay. Um, just double check myself. Oh, have fun with Baldur's Gate 3 psychosis. Oh, yes, enjoy. Yeah, so this is, I didn't want to go for like too comically orange. So I thought cobalt scale would be nice, but we're definitely going to want to thin that out. Okay. But when you, that'll be nice. Oh, yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So we'll do cobalt scale in the hair. Which that's always a turn of phrase. You're like, I didn't think I'd be saying something like that, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, and make sure every that's week, thinned out for sure. Add some water to it because you want this to tint, not necessarily cover what we've done with the shadow layer work. Okay. Mm, I think that'll work. Yeah, so that's the consistency of mine thinned out. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm I'm there too. Yeah. If I go any further, I, this turns into a wash. Yeah, both literally and figuratively. Right. And I'm just gonna start applying it into the hair. All right. And uh... what's happening is because we have the dark tones and the light tones, as the color goes on, it's tinting the hair so that you'll have the light and dark still playing through because the paint's been thinned out. Mm. And again, you won't have to worry about going back and doing dry brushing. Also, I agree this is a really cool color next to the gold of the crown. Yeah. That's good. Although I, I didn't want to actually... go orange and have it look cartoonish. Yeah. Plus with so the like nice auburn, all the colors in the um, in the sword, in the flames in the sword, mm -hmm. having that be the most vibrant orange, I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. I want to play that up more. There we go. I actually had to add, add more, more paint. paint. Okay. Yeah, I thinned it out a bit too much i'm like that nope happened. i'm doing a wash this is not exactly what i wanted to do that's okay though yeah i think better that than the other way around because exactly then you end up getting rid of all the details accidentally you can always go back in and add more of the tint it's harder to pull back if you put too much overcoat yep so handle as you see fit Oh, also, I missed the top of the hour. So if you Ooh. are here from uh, from the alert in-game for Idle Champions, welcome. We're on what might be the last hour of our Fire Giant that we've yeah. been working on for a couple of weeks now. If you do have any questions for us, either about uh, mini painting or Idle Champions, uh, I forgot what else we were... Any questions that you got, go ahead and put those in chat because we've got yeah. Gabe grabbing questions to put in our backstage document. And, and I've been just kind of keeping an eye on chat too. Uh, just make sure you put question in big capital letters before your question so that we know, oh, uh, we're supposed to grab this one. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. will be helpful. I mean, I think it's... I grabbed a slightly bigger brush mm -hmm. just because of the quantity of hair, but I'm getting to points right. where I'm like, oh, I think I think a detail brush is warranted. Honestly, it's a little bit easier if you go in with a detail brush. Not going to lie. 
Yeah, especially around the braids, which are hanging around some of the yeah. spots I have already painted. Yep, exactly. All right. Brush swap. Mm -mm. Yeah. Belson says, as soon as the stream is over, I'm going back to Baldur's Gate 3. Makes I mean, sense to me. Yeah. I'm very, very behind on Baldur's Gate. You and me both. Uh, I have not had time to sit and really play it uh, genuinely. Yeah. As much as I wanted to. I was joking, although it is true. I have actually watched other people play more of it than I have. Right. Because I can put on a stream of, you know, friends that are streaming Baldur's Gate and I can put it on and support them and lurk and work kind mm -hmm. of thing. But uh playing Baldur's Gate 3 you can't really do other things while you're playing no. it takes too much brain in my opinion anyway absolutely maybe it just takes too much of my brain no it's, it involves some thought and plus for me it's also like I'm sitting at this desk chair for a majority of my day so it's kind of like I can't sit in the chair for a very long period of time and consistently keep things up and be comfortable yeah so I'm kind of waiting for the weekend to be able to take a break and then come in and play Whereas I've continued to play uh, Diablo on a regular basis because it gets to the end of the day. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I've got I've got a little bit of time, wind down, do something yeah. fun before going to bed. And then my brain says, but you don't want to think, right? Thinking, uh, there, there's no thinking anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So so I, I put on Diablo and, and like a podcast that or something. Makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> But that's okay. I get to spend time yeah. with Lazelle in game. Exactly. And I've, I've been doing that for a while, so I've been lucky. Right. <laughs> oh, that's hair. Oh, whoopsie. I'm playing the same game. I'm like, oh wait, that's hair. That's hair. That's, hair. <laughs> that's, that's part of the hair. That's also part of the hair. Yeah, there's there's a spot here at the very, very end that I I painted as though it was part of the armor, and I'm like, oh no. Oh no, Lauren, that is, is actually hair. There's hair there. Oh, <laughs> um, okay. And now let's get underneath you. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Yep. <laughs> yep, Chad, if you're asking questions, I will get to you momentarily, but I am... Um... I'm taking care this of hair. This time. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing. Also hunching. I need to stop hunching. Yeah. Fix that posture, young lady. It's not even like this is a small spot, but it's right next to where I've got the hammered copper on the mm. armor. And I want yeah. to make sure that that stays separate. Fair. Completely fair. Okay. Okay. You good. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, okay, I got it. I, I think I got it. Oh. <sighs> uh, well, thank you, uh, Full Squeaky. I appreciate it. Uh, for, for those that don't know, uh, Wednesday was the final episode of the Velvet Lodge. Although I believe mm. there's still like some supplementary material coming out. Um, some uh, other bits of interviews and things because they released interviews before the show started, but they were very smart, obviously, and edited mm. it. So it was only stuff that contained no spoilers. Right. Um, and now that the show is out, they can put out some of the, the rest of the interview and gotcha. where we do talk more specifics, but yeah, mm -hmm. Wednesday was the was episode seven. Very cool. Yeah, it is. I am happy, but I'm also like that weird sad of oh now it's over. Yeah, that's a thing. I mean, mm -hmm. same thing happens with ICPs. I'm like, oh yeah, they're done. But I was having so much fun doing this. And then watching it happen. And then, oh, and now it's done. Yep. yep. But thank you. I appreciate that. 
and this is not a spoiler because I won't tell any details on it, but now that the final episode has gone up, uh, you can't see it because it's that wall, but I've had my character sheet framed and ready to go, uh, but I hadn't posted it anywhere because I wanted to wait for the final episode to mm -hmm. drop just in case someone actually saw it on a stream or something. And so right. now that the final episode is out, my character sheet is, it, it spent eight months sitting in my closet waiting. Wow. And now it's up. That's lovely, though. And I had emotions. Of course you did. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> And also, yes, just like Baldur's Gate 3, no spoilers in chat. Yes. We appreciate you. Mm-hmm. I know uh, Gabe was having to do some extra work in chat this morning because we had some Ooh. some people coming in deciding that they wanted to spoil things because the, they were having fun spoiling things. Well, that's not pleasant at all. No, no. Our, our, our fans, our chat did not have any of that. But yeah. Yeah. It always sucks when that happens. Yeah. Uh, I don't get that mentality of like, mwahaha, I'm going to ruin it for you, even though I've got to enjoy it for myself. Right? I feel exactly the same way. Like, but why? Yeah. And that's been a thing for a while. I mean, I remember mm -hmm. book releases, people going to book releases and like yelling out right. spoilers at the people in line. Uh, I've been at video yes. game releases where people have somehow, you know, either they found what the uh, the ending actually was or they mm -hmm. just, you know, decided they were going to troll people and so would yell out how things ended. And it's like, ah, but, but let people so have their fun. Sure. So much like I've honestly have lost interest in trying to get involved in some streams because they get spoiled left, right, and center. I'm like, well, I'm not interested in watching anymore just because I don't want to have to try and dodge spoilers all the time. Yeah. Um, I've just taken a step back. I'm like, yep, I'm better off just not engaging altogether. So Yep, yeah. being able, and for me, like, I don't mind, at least with Baldur's Gate 3, like, right. we're not doing spoilers in chat, but, like, I know when I go into someone else's stream who's playing Baldur's Gate, I'm like, okay, I'm getting spoiled, yeah. oh, and yeah. that's fine, you know, like, I'm yeah, I'm not going to be able to play a lot of this game for a while, and so I'm just enjoying everybody yeah. else's enjoyment. Exactly, totally fair. But that is, that is me making a conscious decision to be like, mm -hmm. I'm going to spoil this for myself. Oh, totally. That's my favorite thing about when about Luke being a cinephile is mm -hmm. he enjoys going to just every movie on the planet. And then I get to listen to him talk about the movie and what he liked and didn't like. And I don't necessarily have to go myself. And so I right. get to just enjoy his enjoyment. Mm -hmm. No, that totally makes sense. Okay, so the hair is starting to dry a little bit more. I did end up doing two coats because I had thinned mine out enough. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see how you get the lovely tint of color, but all the details of the braid work showing through. Yeah. And I got Which really, really like a similar thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So now the name of the game is going to be kind of creating a little bit more of a flesh like look as opposed to a stone like look. Okay. To the skin. Um, so I think what I want to do here is there is the gray ooze color. And the D&D &D prismatic paints, but that might be too light. I'm getting that out right now. I just want to double check it. Okay. Uh, no, we might actually be good. Um, so the name of the game is also to thin this one out, just like what we did with the hair. Okay. Because Great. I don't want this to be full coverage. I want that work that we did underneath to come through, but this will sort of give it a more... I just hit my microphone. Um, is that what that was? It. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Italian problems when you use your hands to speak and you have things all around your hands and you're just like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> it was an interesting noise I have to say it didn't sound like you'd hit it I it's happened like, to be looking somewhere else and I was just like what what just what was it here ASMR <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so we're gonna thin that out too because what this will do is sort of um glaze it and 
give it more of a flesh look as opposed to um, like it's made out of rock or stone. But you definitely wanna make sure that it is acting as a glaze and not as a full color. Like I, that's still too thick. You can see on my hand, it's sort of obliterated any flesh tone underneath. Yeah. Yeah, fuel, I can't do anything uh, like the foam pop filter or anything like that because cats. <laughs> yeah. Also, it can be very hard with this specific setup. I mean, nothing is going to be ideal for some no. of the stuff that we're doing. And the less in this area, the better. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So, this is the consistency I, consistency I want. Okay. You can see it's tinged my skin, but not completely changed the color of my skin. So and I'm actually going to start this on the hands just as a test run. There we go. And you'll see what it's going to do is sort of tone down the stark contrast that's been going on and give it more of a cohesive color, but still have details popping through. I I actually think this is a, a good question that can be answered without any spoilers. Um, mm -hmm. The Moles Revenge was asking, my one question about Baldur's Gate 3, do I need to have played or be familiar with Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 first? Which no. I, I actually don't know, but I don't think so. No, you not having played those? No, 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 no. No, you could jump into this and just treat this as a um, play it by itself. And then if you want to go back and check out more, yeah, you could play the other two games. Yeah. That's excellent to know. I don't think that's a spoiler. I think that's a... No, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that, or like, uh, how many hours is it? <laughs> was another yes. one that came up that I'm like, I mean, that's a decent question to ask. That's a good, like, how much that. time am I going to devote to this? Yeah. Totally. How much of question. my life am I spending in the next couple of years? Right. Oh, I forgot. I still have to go back and add the silver to the. Oh, oops. The end of the sword handle for the gotcha. Damascus look. Yeah. I, I can remember to do that a little later. Okay. I'm, I'm doing hand stuff now. Exactly. So now you get the hands as they start to dry. You can see we still have the shading happening, but it's not as drastic as before. So this gives it more of a flesh look. And I'm going to do the same to the face. Yeah, I really like this because I'm very impressed by the amount of detail in the hand, like the mm -hmm. the the vein on the top of the hand yeah. for at least for mine where he's holding stuff. That's just mm -hmm. super cool. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep an eye on a few things. Yeah. Totally understand. Yeah, Belson says, uh, per Steam, uh, he's they played 15 hours already of the game, which, I mean, that's a good chunk. Yeah. I do know people who've played a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. But, you know, I get it. I get, I get the whole... It's come out, and I want to just mm, oh, totally. dive right in. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And especially for people who played the beta versions, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. who already kind of know. I know that a lot of updates and changes were made for the final release, but like, right. who already at least know the 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 ins and outs in the beginning. I know a lot yeah. of people who are able to get through that the first hour or two super fast because mm -hmm. they already had like decisions that they knew they wanted to make or a build that they wanted. Whereas someone like me was like, okay, I'm going to spend another hour creating this character, mm -hmm. but I'm still going to enjoy. Yeah, so this is with the face also done. You can see how all those lovely details still play through. 
Yeah. But it looks more like someone's skin as opposed to stone. Yeah, I've got the hands done, but I still got to do the face because yeah. I had to move to a small brush. Face and the I'm ears. Gonna... Yeah, there's ears I need to get to. One ear. I'm actually going to start with the ears and we'll we'll go from there. That's fair. Two ear. Do do do. Okay. Okay. I want to let that dry before I try and do any type of eyebrow work with the cobalt scales. <laughs> oh yeah. Because <laughs> that's going to be a fun mess if you try and paint that while the flesh is still drying. Um. So. I think at this point what I want to do is I'm going to work on getting the eyeballs. And for that, I'm going to go in with the, uh, not the glorious gold, but the pale gold. What is it? Polish gold? Polish gold. Yeah. Okay. And dot the eyes with that. So they have that really cool glowing effect. I'm just finishing up the face now. Yeah, go for it. Let's see if there I can do it. Under the chin. Not painting the braids. Okay, there's one. A one and a two, a two and a three. No, wait. This isn't that kind of mini. That's the beholder. <laughs> and to four and to five right i'm literally here like i need to make sure that i get the nostrils and there we go with the eyes yeah i like that See, because the fun thing is, is with metallic, it catches the light, so it almost looks like it has pupils. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And it moves with how you position it. I like that a lot. I will be there shortly. Yeah, of course. Just got the face done, and I got to fix one mm -hmm. little thing. Totally fair. I'm going to try and be brave, and now I should be good to get these eyebrows. Yeah. Do that. Okay, okay. I'm going to let that sit for a second before I go for the eyes. Go for the, the eyes, eyes, Lauren. Ooh. It'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> And you, you said you did not use glorious gold. You used a different gold? I used the polished the gold. Polished gold. Thank you. Yeah. Where did my cobalt scales go? <laughs> polished gold. I hope that was... No? yeah hi lander I, i'm reading your comment now yeah i mean if you have knowledge of D, &D to play the game yes that'll help however i don't think it's even necessary to know what D, &D the game itself is like you can still because they have fantastic tutorials with Baldur's gate 3 so you really can come into it as a fresh player and get some great guidance and learn how to play the game pretty darn well does it help sure is it necessary no agreed oops mm. And you just used a paintbrush for the eyeballs? Yep, just a little detail brush. Okay. I think I'll do the same. I think I think you're right that these are big enough eyes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Fingers crossed. Doing that with the eyebrows right now. <laughs> Ah. 
Nope, nope, nope. One furrowed brow. Oof, that's a big. Sorry, I've gotten quiet, one. chat, but it's, yeah, it's that time. It's the detail work. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Like most of the eyes in my life, I'm happy with one and the other is eh. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty standard, though, from any Yeah. Pain. I might even still be able to fix that other one. I, just, it, I got more than I wanted on it. It, it bled to a different spot, so I yeah. might be able to fix that. But I do agree. It gives it gives a really nice mm -hmm. glowy effect. Yeah. Once again, not as prominent on my camera, but I I promise it's there. Definitely a fun look. Okay. All right. So then... sometimes what I do with more um like humanoid flesh tones is I'll go back in and I'll do things like blushes and everything like that. But in this case, I'm not going to go in and do that with a fire giant, um because they do have like this very pale grayish toned skin so i'm not going to do that so much um so i'm going to leave this as it is for the face because i'm really happy with how that looks because you still get all those details popping up in the shadows you're kind of getting oh that's better you can see when i move my bright light off you can see there's yeah. still all this cool detail to the flesh so i want to leave that i don't want to play around with that too much um, remind so me what now... you did on the eyebrows sorry it, i just took the cobalt flesh and just did the eyebrows on that uh, but okay. don't thin that out. Just keep that straight up cobalt flesh or cobalt scales. Sorry, cobalt, cobalt scales. scales. Um, okay. And then just very carefully with a detail brush, kind of fill in the brows. To get that. So that means we have a little bit of time left and we can work on the base. Yeah. Which will be fun. So then I'm going to grab the three, the orange fire, bloody red, and... Sun yellow. Yep, sun yellow. And kind of give this almost, we're going to give it like a lava look underneath. So I'll show you how I like to do this. Okay, put those brushes over I'm here. I'm just finishing up with the brows now. Yeah, totally cool. I'm going to start with the bloody red, which is like a classic cherry red. And I'm just going to randomly start putting this down in nooks and cranny areas. Not necessarily, not necessarily a full okay. rhyme or reason to it. Okay. And it's okay to be messy at this part. Like it doesn't have to be perfectly lines, nice and even or whatever, just splat it on. Fully tactile, just splat it on. Just splat. Yep. Bloody red. Bloody red. And not thin down, you said, right? Nope, not thinned out. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Just in random spots. Yep, and chat is 100% uh, agreeing with you. Do not need to have played any D&D &D no. or previous Baldur's Gates. Yeah, because I'd hate for people to get stuck in sort of a gatekeeping aspect thinking, oh, well, I can't really play this game because I haven't played D&D, when that really is not the case. Yeah. You can absolutely go in at fresh. If anything, if you enjoy playing video games and you haven't jumped into playing D&D, &D, play Baldur's Gate, see if you like it, and then maybe try playing D&D &D later on down the line. Yeah. It's the video game version of the D and D movie. Do you need to know anything about D and D to go watch a D and D movie? No. Absolutely not. Will it give you kind of an overall feel of a lot of D and D games? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I'm shifting to orange fire. I'm going to do the same thing. Just going in with random streaks and dabs and dabs along the base. No rhyme or reason. Just where I feel so inspired to place it. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Now that was my turn to put hair 
on the microphone. My oh, bad. I didn't even hear it. Didn't even hear it. Maybe I felt it more than it came through the mic. Or or well, maybe the mic was good about the noise gating. Who gating knows? It. Yeah. That is absolutely a thing. Normally my mic is very good. Like I neighbor was outside blasting their music and no one brought it up, so <laughs> Okay, I think that's good. So I will move okay. on to orange fire. Fire! You know, fire giant, fire! And orange fire. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call that with the orange fire, and then I'll shift over to sun yellow. So basically your classic color is orange, red, yellow, primary true, and secondary true. Mm. Oh, sorry to hear about the potato crashing, Lurking uh -oh. Rider. Hopefully it doesn't do that again. Yeah. Poke, 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 poke. <laughs> Little pokes, little poke here, little poke there. Yeah, I'm remembering how this worked the last time we did this. And so yeah. I'm trying to learn from the things that I was unhappy with there. Yeah, and in this case, I'm making it more focused as opposed to a widespread splatter. So it's working more in the deeper grooves, like so. Yeah. All right, I think I'm going to leave it at this. So it's it's kind of like Jackson Pollocky right now on the base. <laughs> and I'm going to let that dry. And now what I'm going to do while that's drying, because we do need that step to dry before we finish up the base, I'm going to go and grab the Mod Podge Gloss, Mod Podge Ultra Gloss. Remember, this is a liquid. It's not like you're a Mod Podge paste form that you'd get to do decoupage and things like that. Or, you know, your kindergarten, take the balloons, dip newspaper in and make like your masks and things like that. <laughs> we're going to go back to the sword and we're going to put the gloss onto the sword. Flames and the Damascus silver area. So I like to just take the top off and dip my brushes into this. This is how I'll apply it. Alright. Let's see if I can grab my gloss. Nice. Somewhere. <laughs> uh, gloss. Hey, you got it on the first try. Yay. And there's the... And that's the brush I use for washes. What is the brush I usually use? I have a brush that I literally... Oh, I gotcha. Kind of like... Yeah. So the reason why I'm doing this is because um, with the Citadel washes, it can kind of mattify slightly. And this will bring out the shine a little bit more by putting on the gloss. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Totally okay. Just had to dip below and find. And she's back. I'm going to have to hold this carefully. There we go. Don't roll off my desk. Okay, I'll try not to. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, for the gloss, we're doing the, the whole thing? The sword. Or just the, yep, the sword, the sword and the flames. No, nope, I'll hold okay. there. Yep. The whole shebang. The whole shebang. Now, when it comes to the mini itself, we won't have time to do that, but you could do things sort of pick and choose where you want your mats to be, where you want your gloss to be with finishing things up. Um, so I like to, with like the more hammered like metals, I'll use a matte or a satin gloss mm -hmm. on those. But for the things like the shinier gold and the shinier silvers, I'll go in and hand paint in the gloss finish. So that's sort of a pick and choose as you go along. And obviously anything that's fabric, that gets matte treatment. Unless you're purposely trying to make it look like satin or silk. Oh yeah, that would look real good on silk, yeah. wouldn't that? That'd be super cool. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. It's fun to play around a little bit. That'll be a weekend project. 
yeah finish up finish up the exactly the glossy and the the mats yeah like don't do it right now because a lot of this paint hasn't cured yet so you want to give yourself at least 24 hours before you start doing your finishes like this but we did this sword in the first part of this whole series so it's good and ready for its treatment. yeah um, but again, this is not, this isn't your classic, you know, paste in a jar Mod Podge. This is a special Mod Podge Ultra. It's a liquid form. It has a spray pump bottle action. It's not aerosol based, which is great. So you can control where you're pumping this and where you use it. And this is honestly my go-to for sealing minis. And it comes in a gloss and it comes in a matte. And now I'm just okay. using my brush because it got into all of the little creases and I'm just like, I'll just use that crease to paint over here yeah. and I'll just use that crease. As you can see, it kind of gets a glow going back. Yeah. So I'm going to set this on a nice safe spot. I tend to put it onto metal for those to dry. And then close that up because that needs it. And then we're going to jump back to finishing up this base. Which for that I want. There we go. There we go. Let's have fun. We'll do black pudding. So we're going to do black pudding. We're going to dry brush this all over the base. Um, basically, the reason why we're dry brushing is we're going to let those bits of red, orange, and yellow peek through. Um, but the dry brushing will give me more controlled approach so I can kind of build up where I want to and leave it less built up where I want to have more of those colors playing through is the game plan but yeah mm, black pudding like has plan. like yeah black pudding has that fun like almost navy blue black look to it midnight blue that's the word I'm looking for it has a midnight blue to it yeah it's really fun to kind of play around with the cool and the warm tones together so you'll see what I mean in just a second I'm going to go through and start doing this And it kind of creates this magma poking through the cracks look. Which is what I wanted to go for. Why did I put that there? Yeah, yep, just, very similar uh, to the Nightmare Bells one. You got yeah. it. Yeah. And I really do love how this uh, black pudding, that, that secondary mm -hmm. color of it. Yeah. It's just such a cool paint. It's a great color. I'm so happy they brought it into the set. And I am still keeping an eye out for questions uh, since we mm -hmm. are in our last 10 minutes. So if anybody oh, has any questions, goodness. now would be the time. Yes. Uh, and also, do we want to talk about what we are doing next week? Since we are, we're 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 done. That's right. We're done. We are. Uh, we're doing the gift Yankee, correct? For I'm... Lizelle. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I'll have those details in uh, the Discord uh, this afternoon. Yep. And I will I will drink in a moment as soon as mm -hmm. I am not in the middle of. Hardcore dry brushing. Totally fair. And honestly, we're just going to be working with the D&D um, &D prismatic paints, both beginner and intermediate colors. And then it's the, uh, I don't have it with me. It is in a box far, far away. It's one of the Get the Yankee figurines from, or minis figurines, minis from D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures, one of the more recent waves from WizKids. Yeah. All right. So I have to ask because you just corrected yourself. Uh -huh. is, is there an actual um, technical difference between a mini and a figurine? Industry terms. Okay. Yeah. I thought there was a chance it might be something like that. Uh... Yeah, figurine you tends never to get tossed around more with things like um, dollhouses and whatever. Ah. But quite frankly, very similar, <laughs> very similar ilk. That makes sense. Yeah. Ah, nope. Oh, 
uh, Lurking Writer wants to know, question, get the Yankee next week. Does that include, at a future point to be determined, a red dragon mount for them? And Bellswin oh. uh, is is all about, oh my god, please, more dragons. Oh my god, please, more dragons. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm here for dragons. I'm, I'm totally here for dragons. I won't say no. I think we'll just need to find a good spot for painting another young adult dragon. Yeah. A young dragon, I should say. We're specifically not doing a a dragon with the Githyanki mini, although no. I I appreciate the the tie-in. That's actually I hadn't even yeah. really thought about it until you mentioned it, and so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It does. It does. That's just another hefty uh, mini paint for sure. Yeah, even the young. Because we did the, the young green, green. One. Yeah, that took us a good four episodes. Four or five, yeah, actually. Cause, yeah, because even the young the young ones are yeah. big. They're big. They are. But yeah, that idea of like, all right, we're going to paint a Githyanki, and now we're going to paint their dragon. Mm -hmm. And now they have a mound. And like, okay, that's... Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah, that is fun. Okay, so I need to stop because I'm noticing if I pull off too much, it's starting to pull off paint. I don't want it to. So mm. I'm going to let this dry, and I'm actually going to do another round of the um, black pudding to deepen up the color a little bit more, but it gives you a sense of right now how that kind of gives you the cracked earth feel. But this base needs to dry a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So we're close to done. We're, we've we've pretty much hit the almost done. It's just this base. We need another layer of dry brushing the black pudding on, uh, but hold off before doing another round of that so you're not ripping your paint layers off because you don't want to do that. Nope. So once I take care of that, I'll post pictures over the weekend so you can see how it looks. But let's start doing a little bit of assemblage. Yeah, and that's the other thing I like. got to do over the weekend yeah. is... Uh, cause I have to super glue on my sword since yeah. I got a little bit of a little bit of a kit bash going on. Uh, so I'm not going to try to do that right now. I want to wait until everything yeah. is real, real dry. But this gives you a sense of what this looks like put together. I haven't, oh, I'll super glue the sword in when that's also dry. Cause it's still also a little bit tacky to the touch. Um, but once that's dry, I will super glue the sword into place. I'll finish up getting that second layer of the black pudding onto the base itself, which will even further soften up these more stark lines of the reds and the oranges and the yellows. And then can go in and kind of pick and choose what I want to use for seal coats in terms of matte and gloss and satin, if you want it kind of shiny, but not completely. But that gives you an idea of how this all pulls together. Yeah for these fantastic fire giants from WizKids. And again, if you haven't seen them in scale to a medium humanoid, <laughs> here's your scale. Yeah. Yeah. They're a big and sizable. Yeah. They are they're quite big sizable. for sure. Like from sword tip to base, it's about five inches tall, but that gives you a sense of what this looks like. Almost fully assembled. So we're, we're almost there. We're almost done. A couple little homework things for Laura and I to do over the weekend before we share photos, but this pretty but much gets you close to done. Exactly. So don't forget, we have cool don't things forget. happening for the game. Don't forget. Remember, we have Remember some cool skins things. that are coming out. We already have Spelljammer, Averin, and Whittle available in the in-shop game right now. Um, so if you want to check out those two other new skins, I mean, come on. They're so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> There's all these Especially that fantastic one. details that they both brought into their design calls. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm here for this. I want Whittle's boots. Right? I do too. I want Whittle's like, boots like specifically for boots. to in order to play my Circle of the Stars Druid. There you go. Oh yeah, that would be cool. And then forgive the size of this. This is just because it was a quick add-in. Um Nika's gonna have <laughs> skin as well <laughs> coming out on the 16th, though. So that'll be available on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific. Make sure to check that one out when you go in to log in and unlock Lazelle. Lazelle is going to be joining the champion roster on the 16th at 12 p.m. Pacific as well. And then, um, oh yeah, by the way, if you've signed up for our newsletter, hopefully by now you've received the newsletter 
for the Star Dream weekend where you get a free Star Dream chest in your newsletter. And y'all can have some fun uh, having your TimeGate weekends going on and doing this uh, lovely weekend buff and getting that little newsletter. If you haven't signed up yet, go into the game. There's a place where you can get signed up and all that goodness. And we'll send you one email a week. One. Mm-hmm. One and we give you something free to help you with the game. <laughs> It's all good. It's a good free thing. It's a it's a gold chest free thing. So yeah, 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 exactly. And then uh, Gabe, as always, thank you so much for moderating the chat and helping us with all those questions, especially today because Lauren and I were very much focused on details. So yeah, that comes in very handy. And is there anything else, Lauren, that we can think of? Uh, thank you, chat, and thank you, V. Awesome. All right, so we will see you next week when they get the Yankee. Not Lazel, but I'm going to try my best to make sure we have her kind of looking like Lazel. Until next week, everyone, take care, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.